All right, uh, I'm going to start out by letting you hear what a shakuhachi sounds like. So I'm going to play a little bit of a piece, and then I'll go into talking a little bit about um, the flute, um, the hist a brief history of it, and uh, something a little bit more about the music, and in particular about uh, a particular type of music that's uh, specific to the shakuhachi. So um, let me begin with the piece. So that's what a shakuhachi sounds like. And let me click through a couple of these slides. That's what one looks like. Um, that particular shakuhachi is, uh, comes in two parts and you put it together to play it, but it's lying there um, in two pieces. And here uh, is an example of a, a photo of a shakuhachi and um, then another Japanese instrument called a koto. Uh, which you see a little part of there as well. And that's a stringed instrument from Japan. And I'll talk just a little bit about that later on. So, we'll start out with uh, what exactly is a shakuhachi. Um, there, it's, it's first of all a flute. And it's um, one of several flutes uh, that is played in Japan. So it's a Japanese instrument. And uh, this one is particularly made of a very, very thick type of bamboo. If you can see me, I think you guys can see me, uh, you can see that the bamboo is extremely thick, um, thick walled, and that was the end of the flute. Um, this is the top of the flute where I blow, and it's also very thick. It's not like a fishing rod or anything. It's a very special type of bamboo called madake, and that bamboo is harvested in China and in Japan in, in sort of wet areas, in swamps. And the makers go out to pick the bamboo, and uh, it's, it's usually in really nasty areas. I mean, way out amongst, uh, you know, the sticks, as it were. Um, but they harvest the bamboo, and then they work with it to create a flute out of it. Okay, they hollow it out. Uh, they cut it in half uh, and make a joint so it can put, be put back together. 
primarily that's done in order to uh, shorten the flute so it's easy to carry around. You can put it in a bag in two pieces. And then they drill holes in it. Uh, there's holes in the back. There's one hole in the back and four holes in the front. So it, as you, if you saw me play there, you saw me blowing on the end of the flute. It's an end-blown flute, but it's played a little bit more like a Western flute than, say, a recorder. Uh, a recorder is something called a fipple flute, and it has a little channel for air to go through to redirect the air across a little knife edge internal to the flute. Uh, this one has the knife edge external to the flute, and uh, just like a Western flute, the, the edge is external to the flute. It's not buried in the, in the pipe anywhere. So you're blowing across the, the knife edge by yourself. You're not using any kind of aid to direct the air like a, a fipple flute would, would be. It's, although when people see it played, because it's played end, uh, it's often confused with a recorder or a Native American flute, and it's neither, and it's not played anywhere near the same. Um, there is actually a third kind of flute. This is called an end-blown flute. There's a transverse flute, which is Western flutes are transverse flutes. There are fipple flutes, which are like recorders, penny whistles, Native American flutes. And um, then there's one other type of flute called a rim-blown flute. And if you're familiar with uh, the flutes of Middle Europe, uh, there's a flute called a caval, which is a, a rim-blown flute. And they're played all up and down uh, sort of um, the, the Slovakian areas in, um, in Middle Europe. Um, it's, it has five holes, as I said, and it's, um, this particular one is pitched in D, and the standard size flute is pitched in D. And what does that mean? It means when you play the lowest note on the flute, it's a D pitch, a Western D pitch. Um, we, of course, learning the shakuhachi, you learn it sort of in Japanese, or you learn the Japanese notation, which we'll see a little bit later on. Uh, and um, you, you don't call the notes by the, the Western pitches, but, but this is indeed a D flute. Um, and the, the instrument today, it was originally just a fairly rough instrument. The, the makers would just hollow out the flute, uh, smooth it out inside a little bit, cut the, the knife edge into it, and that would be it. Because uh, originally, and I'll go into that as well, the flute was played sort of in a solo context, or mostly in a solo context. So it didn't really matter whether it matched other instruments or not. The newer ones, I mean, the, the ones that are made now, uh, are thoroughly modern. They're tuned precisely and can be played with Western instruments. Um, they're tuned naturally to a pentatonic scale, and you get the notes in between the pentatonic scale. You can play chromatically on it, uh, and you get those notes by sort of half-holing, uh, covering only part of the hole here and then tipping your head down to lower the note. So I could actually demonstrate how the tipping of the head lowers a note. So let me play just some random note and then I'm going to lower the pitch, almost a half step. So the pitch goes down when I lower my head and I'm covering this part of the hole a little bit more. So it's like, you could think of it like any other hole here. If you sort of cover more of the hole, if you only cover part of the hole, and then you slide your finger down and cover more of the hole, the pitch is going to go down as you cover more of the hole. And this is the same here. Um, and then I can raise the pitch from here by, by tipping my head sort of to the side. And for the musicians in here, um, that's how vibrato is done on the shakuhachi. It's not done with the diaphragm like on Western flutes. It's done by shaking your head back and forth. So you can go. And cause that wavering sound. Um, the name shakuhachi comes from the actual size of the flute. 
it's measured in Japanese units. Uh, the word shaku is, is a unit of measure, and it's close to being a foot long. And it's subdivided into 10 subunits, and those units are called sun. So the name of this flute comes from the fact that it's one shaku in length and eight sun subunits in length. So one shaku, eight sun. And the word for eight in Japanese is hach, hachi, okay? And uh, therefore, the, the, the name shaku, hachi, refers to one shaku, hachi, and they leave out the sun. So it's shaku, hachi. Um, there are ones of different sizes, but generally they don't, unless they're trying to be, you know, unless you're a player and you're trying to be real specific as to what flute is being used on a particular piece or whatever, um, they still refer to these sort of generically as shakuhachi, even though they may be much longer or much shorter. Uh, so they won't be one shaku and eight sun, they'd be maybe one shaku and six sun. Um, so there are various lengths, various keys. Uh, the flutes are played in um, some solo fashion, mostly, uh, in a lot of ways, and, uh, but they can be played in, uh, in ensembles, and uh, there's lots of examples of that kind of playing um, throughout Japan. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, more about the music uh, for the, this flute and, and for other instruments as well, but the music I'm going to tell there, you, there's a lot of different types of music in, in Japan. Uh, the type of music I'll be talking about uh, uh, are different types of music that are specific to the shakuhachi. Um, the shakuhachi came in uh, first to Japan in about the 8th century, <clears throat> and it came in at the same time there was a huge influx of Chinese culture into Japan. And um, how the shaku, shakuhachi first appeared in Japan was um, in the context of the, um, the court, uh, the, the governing structure in Japan. The, the Japanese adopted the court system uh, from the Chinese and all of its uh, trappings. It, they adopted the hierarchical system of the court, which is very um, a Confu Confucian, but um, they also adopted part of part and parcel with all of this uh, w was all the trappings in the in the court, and um, part of the trappings um, included a court orchestra, and in the orchestra there were various different instruments, and um, one happened to be the shakuhachi. So here's a picture, another picture of the shakuhachi, uh, and um, let's see. Here's the here's the blowing edge of the shakuhachi. Now, in in the court in the in the eighth century, the shakuhachi looked a little different. It uh, wasn't as thick bamboo. That was a a, a later um, innovation, and uh, it had one extra hole. Uh, for some reason, at some point in the history, um, while it was in Japan it uh, actually was simplified a little bit and um, probably due to the types of scales they wanted to uh, produce um, they got rid of one of the holes in the in the flute um, it also was lacquered on on both the outside and inside and like my flute here it doesn't have any kind of lacquering on the outside uh, it's it's just the bamboo it is lacquered however on the inside um, now, the court orchestra consisted of, of various different instruments. In particular, uh, not only did it consist of the shakuhachi, but there was a variant of, a, of another instrument uh, called a biwa in, in, the, um, in the orchestra. There was an instrument called a koto, which was a, a, a stringed instrument. I'm not sure if it had 13 strings at the time, but it's a, 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 now it's a 13-string zither type instrument. The biwa is a lute type instrument. It's played very much like a lute. And then there was a, another instrument called a shamisen. And uh, it's, it was a three-string banjo-like instrument. Um, 
Then there were several other instruments, uh, several other wind instruments, several other flutes, um, and then there was um, a little reed instrument and uh, an instrument that was very much like a mouth organ or harmonica, uh, and there were percussion instruments. Within the first hundred years or so of, of adopting the Chinese court system, the Japanese decided to rearrange it a little bit. And they changed the court system a bit. Um, they changed various rules. They changed, um, they simplified the rules a bit from the Chinese. And part of the uh, simplification process that was going on is they simplified the orchestra. And uh, several inst instruments in the orchestra disappeared. Uh, the shakuhachi being one of them. So at that point in time, um, about the ninth century or so, the shakuhachi all but disappeared from, from Japan. The other instruments, however, the, the court system, the court orchestra was designed for uh, the hierarchy uh, of the country and the music that was played for the hierarchy was not heard by the common people. I mean, it, it just wasn't presented to them in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but, of course, the instruments in the orchestra, um, the concept of those instruments sort of leaked out into the public, and uh, several of them made it out uh, in and amongst the common people, the, the, the biwa in particular, the shamisen, and the kodo were three of them. The shakuhachi didn't quite make it out of the court, so when it disappeared from the court, it sort of disappeared from Japan. They, they, got, they changed some of the instruments in the court, but because it had leaked out into the community, the, um, the kodo, the, the shamisen, and the biwa uh, persisted, and they persisted all the way from, from that time till today, and, and almost virtually unchanged. Um, let's see. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, some of the myths that go around uh, with regard to the shakuhachi. For some reason, the, um, the instrument itself is, has been shrouded in all sorts of strange mythology, and I'll get to that, but a little bit. I don't like to talk too much about it because it's so, um, it's so hard to, to sift out the facts. Um, but there are things that we know about it. Um, we know that around the 13th century and maybe as early as the 11th century, uh, there was another big influx of, well, we know that there was an influx of Chinese culture at that point in time. And part of that influx included uh, what is today known as Zen Buddhism. Buddhism had been around Japan for a while, but um, it really got solidified during about that period between the 11th and the 13th century. And uh, when that was going on, there was a, um, a movement of people between uh, China and Japan. And that movement was basically monks going up to China to study, study Buddhism. And uh, one of the things they brought back with them was the shakuhachi. And it had apparently become a uh, part of some of the Buddhist sects in China and was used as a meditation tool at that point in time. Um, it was used as a meditation tool very much in the same way that chanting was used as a meditation tool. Um, namely, you know, you chant the sutras over and over again to, to get some sort of uh, introspection, okay, some sort of view of oneself, um, and to contemplate the, the world um, as it appeared from within. Um, the monks that, that came back with that, with that began playing the shakuhachi in the temples, and um, it still hadn't leaked out into the general public, so it was still in some sort of a rarefied atmosphere. It was in, in, inside the temples. And the music that was being played on it reflected um, chanting. It was sort of like a musical prayer, if you want to think of it as that. 
Um, there are lots of sort of, as I said, lots of myths that went on um, about sects of monks that played the shakuhachi. And um, let me, I'm going to look at my notes here a little bit because I can't remember the names of the people. But there, there are a couple documented um, bits of history about the shakuhachi, one of which was a, a story about uh, a monk in somewhere in the 13th century. Um, well, he was a, at the time he was a, he, he, he was a general, he was a soldier, and he, he completed a battle. And then after the battle, he heard the sound, the, the myth goes that he heard the sound of the shakuhachi and it, he became enlightened, okay? He reached an, a state of enlightenment uh, by listening to the shakuhachi. So it, it, he put down his, his general rank and joined a monastery to learn the, to learn the flute. And the, the, the myth goes that he, he was the one, he, he, he studied with a, um, a Zen master called Kakushin, who is indeed uh, somebody has has been documented, and he is a documented historic figure, and it was said that he went off and basically founded what became the Fuke sect, which was a f sect of monks that played the shakuhachi, and in particular, they were not uh, attached to any particular temple. They, they were mendicant and roamed the country, uh, begging for alms and playing the shakuhachi. Um, that particular story sort of spawned all sorts of other stories, including uh, one that goes that when the samurai, when when Japan was unified and the samurai were banned, uh, that many of the samurai gave up their swords; they had to, <clears throat> and they joined this sect of monks and became shakuhachi players. And then also they became spies for the government. So there's a lot of odd, interesting stories about the shakuhachi, the monks that are associated with that. But I won't go into that much further on that. Um, by the 16th century, um, the shakuhachi had gotten away from the temples and had leaked out into the public again uh, this time. And... Uh, it sort of rejoined its friends, the Shamis and the Koto, uh, and the Biwa to some extent, um, and became a member of um, little ensembles. So they, they became quite popular. It also became a, um, an instrument of folk music. So uh, a lot of uh, folk music includes shakuhachi playing. By by the 19th century, around the 19th century and into the Meiji period, um, the, which was, what, 18, um, 1860s in that, in that time frame, um, the music began to be codified a little bit, at least for ensemble, and it began being written down. Um, also um, became a little bit more codified. Um, it, it became very, it's somewhat formal in, in not the folk music, but the, the ensemble music. And there are examples of music from that, that era. Um, so now th that brings us sort of to the, the, the late 19th century into the 20th century. And um, at that point in time, of course, Japan was reopened to the West and uh, everything in Japan was being influenced by Western culture. And that included uh, the shakuhachi and also other types of Japanese music. So uh, people began... Um, People began uh, composing for the uh, for the instrument and um, using sort of Western concepts, and there are examples of of, of that. Um, and then by the 20th century, 
um, the later 20th century and the 20 on into the 21st century um, the mu the music of the shakuhachi was really uh, at that point you know adopted as as a standard sort of music and was taught is taught in universities and by private teachers together okay let's talk about the music a little bit there are four types of Japanese music uh, for, that have some relationship to the shakuhachi. There are other types of Japanese music. But um, the first is gagaku, which was the formal court music that I mentioned earlier. And um, there are um, examples. A, gagaku is still performed today. It's come down somewhat unchanged. They've changed the orchestra. Uh, but it's, um, it's a very formalized style of music. Uh, I'm going to show you, an, I'll play an example of Gagaku in a second, a uh, short clip, and uh, I won't be able to show you the music of Gagaku, what the sheet music looks like, because I, I really don't know. I, I haven't been able to drum any up. But I will show you, I, the, the music also... Um, took other forms, minyo being one of them, which is J Japanese folk music, and I'll show you some, um, I'll give you an example of minyo and show you um, some sheet music from that. Um, then there was music uh, for the ensemble, and those are termed sankyoku and shinkyoku. Um, sankyoku and shinkyoku are um, sort of traditional and modern pieces for a uh, Japanese traditional ensemble. And then finally, honkyoku, which is the uh, music that's specific to the shakuhachi, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So this is what a formal gagaku orchestra looks like. And if you can look closely, you'll see those long zithers on the floor. Those are roughly equivalent to kotos. There are some <clears throat> on the left. In the back, you'll see some transverse flutes. Um, in the front, there's, there's percussion. Uh, on the right side, you'll see teardrop looking instruments, which are what became the biwa, uh, which are those lute like instruments. And then in the back row, there's people playing these things that uh, are similar to harmonicas and sound, mouth organs. And then in the middle, in the back, there are people playing little reed instruments. Um, and what the what the music sounds like it's it's actually sounds thoroughly modern it's sort of disjoint and it's uh, a little um sparse so let me play a little bit of it just a little clip there's not much to say about this except that um, sometimes they do include shakuhachi in the gagaku orchestra and as I mentioned earlier the flute has changed a little bit from the uh, from the 8th century uh, it's now five holes instead of six holes but oftentimes when they perform uh, something that calls for a shakuhachi like instrument they use a regular shakuhachi in the gagaku orchestra okay the next type of music is minyo, which is the folk music of Japan. And uh, the picture you see here is me playing a minyo piece and a friend of mine who is an opera singer actually singing uh, a, a minyo, a, folk, a piece of folk music, minyo, from, uh, from actually her home area. And she wanted to perform it, so we, uh, we played it. And here's what it, such a piece sounds like. This isn't exactly the piece we played, but it's similar. And there's an introduction.
So that's an example of a piece of minyo. Oftentimes they use little percussion instruments uh, with it as well and shamisen uh, oftentimes plays. And here's what the uh, a score uh, for a minyo piece um, looks like. Um, the characters are uh, notes um, in which roughly correspond to the finger positions on the flute. And there are other symbols there that tell you how long to hold notes or how fast to play them. Um, but this is, this is definitely a 20th century thing that they codified this. It was an oral tradition, of course. So they, somebody has attempted to write down some of these minyo uh, pieces in, in what most shakuhachi players would recognize something close to what shakuhachi notation, modern shakuhachi notation looks like. Okay, and now sankyoku is ensemble music and sankyoku um, refers to, kyoku refers to music, that's the word for music, and san refers to three, the, the, the number three. And so this is called three music and uh, the three they're re referring to is koto, shakuhachi, and shamisen, three types of instruments that are oftentimes together in ensembles. Uh, Sankyoku could be played not with three instruments, with two or, or whatever, or several kotos and one shakuhachi, various, um, various combinations, but uh, the, the combinations you pick from are uh, the shakuhachi, shamisen, and koto. And here's an example of a piece called Rokudan, which is one of the earliest codified pieces uh, for Koto and, well, it's for Koto Shakuhachi and oftentimes Shamisen. I think it was written originally as a Shamisen piece and then modified to, to be played by Koto and Shakuhachi. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, Rokudan, famous piece uh, of Sankyoku, which was the traditional ensemble music. It, it started around the 1600s sometime. And this is what the music looks like. Um, again, it's read from the uh, right to the left and down the column. And the symbols um, mostly signify what holes are covered at any given time. Okay, and there's timing marks in there which are barely visible and also marks indicating um, how to, you know, if the, if the note needs to be something between the pentatonic scale notes, uh, what to do when, uh, when you encounter that. All right, and then finally Shin Kyoku, which is, again, Kyoku refers to music Shin is the Japanese word for new, um, and so this is new music for, for a traditional ensemble. And here's a piece um, of that called Misaki no Todai, it means lighthouse uh, on the seashore. So that's Shin Kyoku, and that's what this music is. Um, this is sheet music for this exact piece that you just heard. And um, again, it's read from right to left, down the page. And there are two columns, uh, of, I can't point to it, but there are two columns. There's, you'll see a number one 
uh, at the top of the the page all the way on to the right and uh, that side of of those little boxes are the shakuhachi part written out and then on the other side where you see lots of notes there that's the kodo part and um, all three of the instruments the the kodo the shakuhachi and the shamisen have different types of notation which is sort of a little wacky but that's what it was it has been traditionally um, so for instance I, I like to say if, if, if you're an oboe player in the orchestra and you're sitting next to the flutes, you can look over at the flute part if you want to and sort of understand what's going on. I, as a shakuhachi player, can't look over at the kodo sheet music and understand quite what's going on, or the shamisen. Um, but here, on this particular piece of sheet music, they've written out the kodo part in my notation so I can I can see where things are supposed to come in and it's, it's sort of nice when they do that but they don't do it often okay so that's Shinkyoku sheet music now finally we get to Honkyoku which is the 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 music that's specific to the shakuhachi and it's the the music that came down from the Buddhist tradition uh, there's again lots of myths and the like surrounding this music it's it one thing things that we do know about it is that it comes from from Buddhist chant originally so the sutras were being chanted in the temples and these pieces were written or were um, codified in some way it was an oral tradition to represent those sutras um, so it came from Buddhist chant originally uh, the name of the music is Honkyoku. Again, Kyoku means music. Hon refers to personal, the, the word for my. Um, so it, it comes from the, uh, it, it means my music or personal music. You could think of it as solo music or introspective music. And um, the monks who played the, those chants, those sutras on the, on the shakuhachi, practice them um, in a in a well-defined way but they also lived in monasteries which were out in the woods in various places uh, and they were highly influenced by nature sounds so a lot of the music comes down to us today uh, as chants mixed in with various nature sounds um, like the, the sound of birds the sound of water the sound of wind in the grass uh, all of those influenced the playing and were written into the music at some point in time. Um, the modern influences on the on the instrument, well, around the the beginning of the 20th century, again, sometime in the Meiji period on down through the 20th century, um, people began collecting these some of these pieces from from the temples they they wander around and uh, shakuhachi enthusiasts people who liked the instrument um, went around and tried to notate what the monks were playing so there were there were collectors there was a, a fellow in particular named Jinyodo who uh, went around to various monasteries and he took along with him his scribe and uh, the, the scribe um, wrote out the pieces and they you know and the pieces come out with all sorts of different odd notes on it not no, musical notes but notation on it uh, to describe what was going on because there wasn't any kind of notation for this kind of music um, so those people gathered this music together and then they began teaching it and playing it and it became codified at some point um, and various schools sort of formed. So it was an oral tradition at first, then it became notated. There were some notable, in the 20th century in particular, there were some notable players um, and virtuoso players, uh, Jin Yodo being one of them. Um, then there were, there were others, um, and by the, by the late 20th century, there was a collection of people who were well-defined masters on the instrument. And some of them actually went off in, um, to Europe 
and to North America and sort of spread the shakuhachi word and that's when it came came to our country uh, so in the late 20th century let me see here's an example <clears throat> of honkyoku sheet music and um, it's again read right to left and down the column the symbols um, again roughly correspond to finger positions <clears throat> and there are all sorts of special symbols to represent how long notes are held and that kind of thing. Honkyoku music uh, is not played with other instruments, it's played solo and it's supposed to be originally a chant or a prayer and the concept behind it is that each phrase in the uh, piece is a um, is a breath so instead of being organized in, in in meters or measures or whatever it's organized in breaths so it has a, a unique sound and a unique quality to it and it, and it still can be I mean I, there are still sects of monks that use this kind of thing for meditation this particular piece um, came down from the, the the Buddhist tradition but has passed through various different master players and um, has been modified in particular there was a master player in the 20th century who sort of worked very hard to to make the the music instead of sort of esoteric chant music into something that's a little bit more musical and listenable um, this sheet music comes from his school of playing um, so Without further ado, I'm going to play this piece, and you can follow along if you'd like. It's um, it goes again from the right to the left. Those little marks above the lines of music are numbers, um, numbering the lines. Uh, but I'm going to be playing down the, down the sheet. So it's not a very long piece, and then shortly thereafter, I'll just finish up the lecture. So this piece is called Daha, and it contains both the chant-like quality that I mentioned earlier and also the nature quality <coughs> of, uh, of music. It starts out and it, it repeats within the piece several places that are supposed to express a, a Buddhist concept which is breaking through or breaking open and um, it's represented in terms of uh, water breaking against the beach, against rocks on the beach. So there'll be sections of it that are supposed to depict water breaking against the beach. And then there are sections of it that are supposed to represent chanting, either in the lower register or in the higher register. And then there's some other very strange stuff in here too, but uh, who knows what that's all about. But basically, this is a, a, a music that that's composed of nature sounds and chanting so without further ado daha <laughs>
that was Daha. So, in conclusion, the shakuhachi today is, is a, a modern instrument. And of the different types of flutes, though, throughout the world, the shakuhachi is sort of unique in that it's got a, a close tie to, to religion in some way or another, to Buddhism. And it is often it ascribed some sort of spiritual quality. Uh, and I think that makes it attractive to Westerners. There's a lot of people who, who wind up picking it up for that very reason. Um, people outside of Japan in particular. Aside from this, it's, it's a very flexible instrument. It's capable of deep, rich sounds and very expressive sounds. Um, it can convey a lot of emotion. Um, the, the term hankyoku itself, the music for this, uh, refers to personal music or my music and therefore has sort of a, a, a meditative or reflective quality to it, which makes it also attractive. Um, let's see. It can be used in all sorts of contexts. It's used in, 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 in modern music too. And certainly in Japan, there's a lot of people who play it in, uh, in a popular context and also play it in, in a jazz context. Uh, so it's, it's quite flexible. And um, I don't know, I have further thoughts here. There are many, I, I guess there are many aspects of the flute uh, that I haven't covered, things like the types of schools of playing within, in, within Japan and throughout the world. Um, there are different types of flutes. Uh, they're all shakuhachi, but they have different, they're made in different ways. Some are, are, are more finished than others. Uh, and there's whole sects of people who like the, the, the very um, rough, crude, uh, unfinished ones. So, so there's that. But um, that's really about it. Uh, I'll open it up to questions, but let me uh, conclude with, here's a little monk, uh, Daruma, playing the shakuhachi uh, in a cave. Um, and um, with some references, and if you're interested in the references, I can, I can send them to you. There's a couple references that are, are, are books, but in particular, I'd like to point out um, that there's uh, two, um, two or three, um, well, two uh, recordings that I've put it. The last two references, there's uh, the recording Zen by uh, Katsuyo Yoko, Yokoyama, who was a 20th century master of the flute, uh, and uh, Shakuhaji music, A Bell Ringing in Empty Sky by a fellow named Goro Yamaguchi. Uh, both recordings are solo works for Shakuhachi, and both players were, were considered uh, the top of their, uh, the art form within the 20th century. So, um, any questions? Uh, I don't know how we want to do this. Uh, I think that everyone can unmute themselves if they want to ask questions. And I already have this question, actually, this, you, you have a perfect picture, picture here because What's this hat? And I've seen it before. You had one of your presentation. It's this is you, I presume. Yeah, this is this is me. And uh, I'm at an anime festival in uh, out at uh, the Rosemont Horizon, and um, everybody was uh, dressed in in various cosplay costumes and the like. And our our group performed uh, traditional Japanese music uh, for the festival, and um, it, 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 I mean, a lot of the music is used in the background of anime, so they were interested in getting a, a traditional Japanese group to play. Um, but I came in 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 my samoe, which is the 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 dre you know the costume I'm wearing, and um, I brought along the ten guy. This this hat is called a ten guy, and it was worn by those monks that I referred to that were a mendicant that roamed the country playing the shakuhachi and we're supposed to be spies for the um for the government and um they wore these ten guy theoretically for anonymity because they were they were trying to get rid of their 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 the quality of self 
but they also served as a good way of being anonymous if if they were listening in on conversations out in the street people wouldn't recognize them as perhaps a spy from the uh from the government so it's not for sound oh no not for sound at all any other questions comments I have a lot of questions. First of all, thanks a lot, Mike. And it's too bad that you are all muted, so we cannot applause while you are playing. Oh, that's okay. But, <laughs> but you can imagine. So my first question is, why? When do you just? Well, how you encountered for the first time? Why you decided to 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 take and try to to play this instrument? Okay. Well, yeah. You're asking a question about me personally. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I heard the instrument a long, long, long time ago, like around 1970, 71, maybe even earlier than that, on a recording um, that was, I, I was interested in, I've always been interested in music and musical instruments, um, but the particular recording uh, I picked up uh, for a particular symphony that was on the recording, but one of the other pieces on the recording was a piece by a guy named Toru Takamitsu. And Takumitsu was a modern composer, a 20th century composer of Japanese music, but he composed for orchestra mostly. And he tried to incorporate traditional Japanese instruments into the orchestra. So he wrote a piece called November Steps, which incorporates shakuhachi and also the, the biwa, the lute-like instrument that I mentioned earlier. And I heard it on there and I didn't even know what the hell it was. Uh, you know, it just had a very eerie sound to it, and I, I, I liked it, and I, I sort of recorded it in my memory, uh, what, you know, what that sound was. And then later on, I heard the sound and thought, this might be an interesting thing to, to <laughs> seek out. So I tried to seek one out. I didn't find one. Um, I, a friend of mine went to Japan, and I asked him to, n not knowing that, I mean, they're professional instruments, and they're expensive. Um, and there, you know, there are makers that make these, and you know, you have to go to a maker to get one. Um, and uh, I, I sent him off saying, "If you see a shakuhachi, get me one." He, he, he came back with a with a toy shakuhachi and some recordings, which was very nice actually. And then a little bit later on, Marilyn uh, ran into one in a catalog for for for. It was a catalog of instruments, real instruments, but for for children. Mm -hmm. And various people were contributing to this the, this catalog of, of different small instruments for, for children, like very professional toy pianos and that kind of thing. Um, and she saw a shakuhachi and she ordered it. And it turns out it was made by a guy in Northern California who, um, who makes shakuhachis professionally. And the, the flute she got me was, was really good. And uh, so I started blowing around on it and took me about a year to, you know, make any kind of reasonable, uh, you know, notes on it. And then I found a teacher. So that's my story with it anyway. I like the sound, I guess, is the best way to put it. I see. I can continue asking questions or I can give chance other people to ask questions. Anybody else? Or go on, Tanya. I just wanted to say I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Mike. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that you have to close the hole in order to, to have half tone. How yes. you can, but it's really, really hard when you are playing and you cannot see it to, to right. close exactly. So it's not precise. OK, you obviously don't play the violin or no. you don't you don't play the trombone. It's, it's very, How did you guess? <laughs> it's, it's very similar. They have the same problem. Violins, cellos, basses, stand up basses don't have any frets or any way of, 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 of knowing what the, uh, mm -hmm. what the sound is. You have to do it by feel or, and actually it's a combination of feel and sound. So you, you, mm -hmm. you have to know at least sort of the relative pitch. I mean, you don't have to have perfect pitch, but you, you have to know how it differs. You know that this is a D. So you can feel that this is a E flat, which is just a half step up. 
So you can, uh, you do it by, it's feel and sound. I see. How old is your fruit? This particular... And does it matter? Uh, no, uh, most flutes that, not too many flutes have survived since the, from the 1800s. Some have, and they're usually in pretty bad shape. Um, the ones that were made in the 20th century are made a lot better and um, they survive quite well. This one was made in around, I think, 1950. It's, mm -hmm. it, it was made, the reason I know that it was made around then is that that, that fellow I mentioned, Goro Yamaguchi, who is not, um, not with us anymore, uh, his father made flutes, Shiro, and his father had a bunch of students, and his students were older than Goro, and uh, one of the students is, the guy who made this particular flute. Mm. So, um, and he was active around the 1950s, uh, 1950s, 60s in that area. And uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people prize the older flutes, um, but you know, it, it all depends. I think the more modern flutes play better. I mean, they, they, there's been more, uh, more care given to them and there's been a lot more standardization so uh yeah uh, it's a mix mike I who, who makes uh shakuhuchi nowadays it, who makes it, them it, it, there there's there's a raft of people who make them in in uh in japan of course but there are makers all there's a you know a maker in new york there's a couple in california um there are sort of apprentice makers around various states but are there, uh, are there any standards for for making are there i don't know no, no the most standard scenario is if somebody makes and these are used for students because they play very well in pitch this is a plastic one and it looks it looks a lot like bamboo uh it was cast from a piece of bamboo and um it's uh it's real standard, okay? Every one of these plays exactly the same. And uh, these are good for, for students because they, they, they play very well in tune and uh, they, they're about the right weight of a, a real shakuhachi and uh, they have the, the same feel of, of, of a shakuhachi. Now, it, it, it sounds, and I'm going to play a little on this flute for a second, and it'll sound just like, very much like the bamboo flute. Um, the the difference is nuance. You know, it's like a, a a a modern violin made for 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 a student versus a Stradivarius. Okay. <laughs> so. so it sounds very much like a bamboo flute, and it's. It, it tells you something. It tells you that the sound of the bamboo is not really from the bamboo. It's from the coating on the inside. There's a resin coating on the inside of the flute, which is where the, the sound is actually produced, or how the sound is actually produced. Hey, Mike, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, did you play any Western instruments before, or how did you... <clears throat> I play keyboard a little bit. I can't really say I'm a keyboard player. I, I you know, um, I took piano lessons when I was a little kid. I took organ lessons when I was in <clears throat> high school. But no wind instruments, right? Yeah, and, and then I was going to say I also played the saxophone. Okay. And, um, I, I, you know, I played, the, I played the clarinet a little bit. I took some lessons when I was in graduate school. Um, from a, another gra a graduate student in, in music uh, on clarinet and you know I played the saxophone on and off but this the shakuhachi is a is definitely a different instrument it's not a reed instrument so and I also have a question uh, kind of being in Japan a couple of times okay it's completely different music is completely different from Western uh, culture yes How how much uh, do you have to understand the culture to be successful? Uh, 
No, I, I mean, some of, no, I, I understand. Some of it, it some of it comes along for the ride. If you're going to study the music, you wind up having to study the culture a little bit. So I think you become. Well, but what's primary uh, to understand the culture? Because yeah, the the sounds are completely different and mean completely different things in, in Western music, right? Or, uh, yeah, the, the, the somewhat. Yeah, I mean, yes, definitely. There, there, there's, there's a, a strong link there. So, I, I, as a shakuhachi player outside of Japan, it it really behooves you to 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 sort of steep yourself somewhat in the culture. It 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 does help. Um, you know, you play. I play these little folk pieces, and particularly when I'm playing these little children's pieces and and the like uh, on the flute, um, you know, they, they're not my culture. I didn't, I didn't grow up with them. I didn't sing them in high school, but my, my compadres in the Kodo group, you know, they know all these things. They, you know, they, they, they've sung them all. Um, and so I, 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 I'm lucky I, I get to pick up some of that from them. Um, there's the internet now, of course, I can listen to to things, so it it, it does um, it does help to sort of steep yourself a little in the culture. Um, I don't know, you know. I suppose you know you can argue that that I'll never play shakuhachi like a Japanese person plays shakuhachi, but maybe maybe not. You know, I I don't know. Okay, thank There's you. A, there is a connection, however. I, I agree with you. There are so few Japanese people who are playing shakuhachi, so there's no competition, Mike. <laughs> there, there's none. There's not a lot in the United States, that's for sure. But there, it, it, and indeed, there's not a lot in uh, in the world, in some sense. There seems to be a, a big um, movement in in Europe right now. There's there's a lot of people playing shakuhachi where they never did before. <laughs> um, uh, I'm do, not sure do, why. Do you know if they continue to play it in Japan? Do they continue to play it in yeah. Japan? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Not Japan, China. So, oh, China. Sorry. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's interesting. They, they, they've they continued to play an instrument that was the um, original, the predecessor, the the, the <laughs> ancestor of the shakuhachi. Mm -hmm. And it's it's evolved in a slightly different way than the shakuhachi. They've, they've taken two paths. Um, but... That said, there seems to be another big revival in China of the shakuhachi. There, there's, there's this whole group of Chinese people who are, are now studying the flute. So, so that's interesting. It's like it came down to Japan, evolved into what it evolved into, and then now it's going back to China again. But there are people that play the original ancestor of, of, the, of the shakuhachi as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm stopping recording.